St. Kilda Road, January 25th, 8 a.m. Douglas Hadrian arrived earlier than usual at his advertising agency to pick up some designs before calling on a client. Bronson, homicide. Homicide, Sergeant Bronson. This is Douglas Hadrian. Yes, Mr. Hadrian. They've done it again. Three shots as I came in the front door. Were you hit? No. But now you'll believe me, perhaps. I'll tell you again. Someone's trying to kill me. Where are you? My office. Hello. Alleged murder attempt at this address. Ask D24 to send a car out there right away.
you knew what he wanted and where they were kept. Get out. Hello? Hello? Don't worry. You'll be all right in a moment. Of course I will. Did you enjoy watching? I was too shocked to think. Oh, why? He's had these attacks before. We all know about them. I've never seen him in one. But it's not an act. You don't just stand there and stare. <laughs> I want you both in here. Oh, that's a police. Shall I go and let them in? No, they can wait. I'll let them in when I'm ready. Having received Sergeant Bronson's message that an attempted murder had taken place inside the advertising agency, the first constable made the new Australian caretaker, Chico Carley, understand that he needed to get into the building straight away. Come in. Come be a moment, Sergeant. My secretary, Miss Crossman. My accountant, Bill Hemingway. How do you do? All right, Bill. Get on with that costing for the consolidated account. Yes, sir. Ring Hanford. Tell him I'm ill and I can't keep my appointment for nine. Oh, uh, Kevin Sinclair is supposed to be at the Telethiatre. Check that he is. Three shots as I came in the front door. Blank cartridges, presumably, but they caused a heart attack. And I would have died if it hadn't been for Miss Crossman. It's similar to the two previous attempts on my life. And I want to know what you're going to do about it, Bronson. Did you see the person who fired the shots? Not properly. My vision was blurred. How many people you knew you were coming in early this morning? Only Miss Crossman and Hemingway. Well, would Hemingway have a motive for killing you? I've found out that he's been misappropriating funds. You haven't sacked him? No, and it's not a matter for the police. I'll handle it myself. Well, how did you discover it? Kevin Sinclair. He pointed it out to me. Now who's Kevin Sinclair? He's my television director. How many people knew about these previous attempts on your life? Three. You, myself, and whoever's doing it. Mr. Hadrian, if I'm going to conduct an effective investigation, you'll have to cooperate more than you have in the past. I've given you the facts. The investigation's your responsibility. I want to see your caretaker. Get Chico Carly. And I want to interview Hemingway and Miss Crossman at headquarters. Not in office hours. You can talk to them here. Look, I know business is business, Mr. Hadrian. But I want to interview them without being interrupted. I'll send a car for them at 9.30. All right, sir. I want to see your TV director, too. Well, you can't have Sinclair. He's videotaping all morning. Which one would you reach for, Bronson? I don't like any of them. Why not? Come in. Sergeant Bronson wants to talk to you. Sit down, Carly. Mr. Carly, did you see or hear anything unusual this morning? Uh, well, I've been up on the ladder since half past seven. Well, did you hear any shots? Shots? I think I heard. You're not sure? Oh, well, you know, the bigger traffic outside, the oilers and the, the diesel trucks, they make a plenty noise like guns. But I think I heard a bang, a bang, a bang. What time? Oh, maybe about eight o'clock. I've been up there some time. Are you still skeptical? Anything else, Mr. Carley? Else? Oh, yeah, the running. I heard someone running across to the parking lot. And then the car, 
It goes zoom, she buzz off fast, very fast from the parking lot. Did you see the car? No, but I think it sounded like an MG. Well, who drives an MG? Bill Hemingway and Kevin Sinclair. Can I see Sinclair at the teletheater? You can try. All right. I'll go out there straight away. For the man who hits the mark, the cigarette is magnet. And as he fires, we cut to you. Now you look at him with everything you have and say, magnetic magnet. Magnetic magnet. Exactissimo, exactissimo. Now as soon as we cut from her, we see the target. Put the big prop back up there behind it, lined up perfectly. Got it? Mr. Sinclair. Detective Sergeant Bronson, homicide. Seems you have your man, Sergeant. You've come to see me? Mm hmm Let's sit down. Someone tried to kill Douglas Hadrian. Can't be true. Where were you earlier? Here. You came here direct from your home? Nothing to pick up at the agency? Now, this is not the first time. Someone has had a go at him before, twice. I simply can't believe it, Sergeant. What, didn't he tell you? I thought he would. But... No, no. Do you and the accountant get along all right? Yes and no. Which? Well, Hemingway has problems. He's a fool. You can't cover up one mistake with another. I can't tell you any more, Sergeant, about Hemingway. He's not bad, he's just very unwise. Can you think of any reason why anyone would want to kill Hadrian? No, I can't. Uh, Douglas Hadrian's a man of iron, and shrewd, but sympathetic. And generous to a fault. Is he? Not he helped me buy my home, my car, even my boot. You're paying the money back? Well, on the most liberal terms. Outside of being strict about business, the chief doesn't push people around. I want to see a run through of the Magnet commercial. When you finish, Sergeant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's coming along quite well, sir. No problems. I'll be the judge. Now get moving. I want to see all of it, and I'm leaving for the country in half an hour. We finished, I think, Sergeant. Mm -hmm. Right, we're through. Through once again. Come on, ready? Goodbye, Mr. Hadrian. Bronson, I'll be calling it at your headquarters in ten minutes. Oh? It's a matter of life and death to me, and I'm not satisfied with the way you're handling it. So I'm going to see your inspector. I'm familiar with this case, Mr. Hadrian. It's all here. Then perhaps you can tell me why Bronson did nothing about those attempts on my life. When am I going to get some action? After I'm dead? Regarding these two previous incidents. Well? You reported them, but you refused to give Sergeant Bronson more than five minutes of your valuable time. And until today, you wouldn't allow him to interview members of your staff. I didn't suspect any of them at the time. If you study this, you'll find that today's incident is the first at the office. And finally, Mr. Hadrian, you refused our offers of police protection. I'm a busy man, constantly on the move. I don't want to be encumbered with a flock of policemen. I'm not the only one. President Johnson and Prince Philip feel the same way. Excuse me. Sergeant, Miss Crossman and Mr. Hemingway are here. Thank you, Rex. I'll be there in a minute. Well, I've given you a free hand now. You've got no excuse. Goodbye. Not that door. Did you finish the costing? Yes, I put it on your desk. Well, what's the good of it there? I'm going to my place up in the hills. Mr. Hadrian, will you accept police protection now? What can you do with a man like that? Shoot him. Would you mind waiting in the next room, please, Mr. Hemingway? Thank you, Rex. How long have you been at the agency, Miss Crossman? Four years. You must like your job. I did. Since I came back, it's been rather horrible. I went to Europe for six months. Well, you must be good at saving money. 
Mr. Hadrian gave me the trip, Sergeant Bronson. Oh. We were in love. I still am. Did he forget you while you are away? I see now that the trip was meant as a goodbye present. If I'd realised it before, I wouldn't have come running back to embarrass him. I even came back early. Because you missed him? I'll leave when I know that he's safe. What can you do? Well, for a start, I'll, I'll go up to Alinda. He has a place up in the hills there, and he shouldn't be there alone. Mm. What about his family? His son's in boarding school, his wife's up in Queensland. I don't think she'll come rushing back. Who wants to kill him, Miss Crossman? Douglas Hadrian has a green thumb where enemies are concerned. He cultivates them, does he? Was anyone else there when you came in this morning? Yes. Bill Hemingway was standing, standing like a zombie watching him. In Hadrian's office? Uh, Mr. Hadrian has what we call his heart starters in his desk drawer. Poor Bill could see that he needed them. A salary's generally high at the office? Well, yes. But Mr. Hadrian encourages them to live it up, image, you know. Mm hmm Has Hadrian helped Bill Hemingway? Not yet. But he'll have to rescue him now. Bill's in debt way over his head. Now, I'd like you to tell me about the two previous attempts to kill Mr. Hadrian. But, but I didn't know. I'd never heard of them. When? During the past fortnight. Uh, do you need me any longer, Sergeant Bronson? I, I've got to get back to the agency for a while. All right. Rex, will you get a car for Miss Crossman? Yes, Sergeant. Thank you, Miss Crossman. Goodbye, Sergeant. Would you come in now, Mr. Hemingway? Police are ready. Yes, I got some useful information from Miss Crossman. Nothing from Hemingway, though. He's shot through. That's interesting. What are you going to do about it? Oh, I'll wait for a while and ring to see if he went back to the agency. Oh, Miss Crossman. The person who fired those shots this morning was a coward, was a crazy man. Was one of us. Us? Miss Grossman, you're not taking those hard starting pills away, are you? I have to take this to Mr. Hadrian to let, at Alinda. I'm taking the tablets in case he hasn't any with him. I see. And uh, why didn't you come back with Mr. Hemingway? Well, is Mr. Hemingway here? Oh, no, uh, not now, but about, oh, maybe ten minutes ago. He shot through like a ball on fire. I was outside and I saw him get into that new car of his and zzz, away he goes. Excuse me, Chico, I must uh, go. Miss Crossman. But I must hurry, Chico. Miss Crossman, please. Look, from now on, you must let your head do the thinking and not your heart. A lady like you must not get mixed up in this business. It's too dangerous. Dear Chico, I must go now. I've got to change before I go up to Mr. Hadrian's place. He'll be there now. <laughs>
Sergeant Bronson. Homicide. Hurry. Homicide, Sergeant Bronson. Hadrian here. I'm on my way to Alinda. There's a car chasing me. Did you get the number? I didn't even see the driver. Bronson, I want the protection you offered. I'll get on to the constable at Olinda. He'll know where your house is. Hurry then, hurry. Constable Peterson from the local police station explained to Inspector Connolly that he had arrived to meet Hadrian only 20 minutes after receiving Sergeant Bronson's message. Sorry. report. Only one item of interest, Douglas Hadrian died of a heart attack. The coroner said the bullet must have hit him seconds after he died. Frightened him to death, eh? That was the killer's original idea, to frighten him to death. And if it had worked the first time, no one would have suspected murder. True. I've got Sinclair in there. Right, Rex. What about uh, Hemingway? I haven't found him yet, sir. But we know that this morning he raced back to the agency in a taxi, got his car and raced home. And also that he spoke to his cleaning woman. When I called her later, she asked me if I was a collector for the Apex Credit Company. <laughs> <laughs> Did she know where he'd gone? I've got her exact words. Mr Hemingway told me to say he is at Mr Douglas Hadrian's place at Olinda. Uh, has Hemingway been home since? Oh, I've been to his house three times and I'm ringing his number every 15 minutes. Hmm. What have you got on Sinclair? Well, we know that he left the telly theatre in a half as soon as Hadrian had gone. Mm -hmm. He told the crew that Hadrian had kicked once too often. Do you know where Sinclair went? I only know that he was at home from about 2.30 until we called for him at 7 this evening. How did you establish that? Neighbours. He borrowed some safe powder from the woman next door. <laughs> All right, carry on. Sit down, Mr Sinclair. You've seen tonight's paper. 
No, the detective Fraser told me. Was it his heart? Yes. Where was Hadrian? At his house in Olinda. Uh, how did your cigarette commercial go? Which should be good. You finished it all right. We still have another 30 seconds to do. Where did you go after you left the studio? Home. Well, why didn't you go back to the agency? I had some work to do at home. What time did you get there? About midday, I think. Before or after lunch? Just before. That's right. I made myself some lunch as soon as I went in. You sure about that now? Yes, I wasn't thinking when you first asked me. I can't get Hadrian off my mind. Think now, Sinclair. What did you do between the time you walked out of the studio and midday? I went for a burn in my car. I was angry. With Douglas Hadrian? Well, you didn't show it while I was there. I didn't want to upset him at the time. I knew his, how his heart must have been affected by the ordeal he'd been through. Didn't you think you'd upset Mr. Hadrian by walking off the job? He wouldn't have known about that until Monday. Now, where did you go for this burn in your car when you left the teletheater? Around the boulevard, then out to Heidelberg, and then back home to Otham. Well, that wouldn't have taken you two and a half hours, would it? I had some shopping to do for the house. Before you go, you give me a list of the shops you went to. Was anybody there when you got home? My wife's in hospital. Oh, anything serious? A baby boy, seven days old. Ah. What work did you do when you got home? Weeks household chores. My wife's coming home tomorrow. How long did it take you? About three hours or so. What did you do when you finished? I listened to the six o'clock news. And you would have started this three-hour stretch of housework at about three o'clock. It's a long lunch break, wasn't it? Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, I had a bottle of claret with lunch. Played some records, then finished off with three coffees and some liqueurs. Well, surely you wouldn't have confused that meal with breakfast. What? A moment ago you couldn't remember when you had lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you realize we'd want to check your movements after you left the teletheater? Why? I mean, yes, I realized that as soon as I heard that Hadrian had been shot, but I... Now, wait a minute. I only told you that Hadrian was dead. I heard on the news he'd been shot. Then why did you ask me if he'd had a heart attack? Sergeant Bronson, I, I, I've been an act of fool. I wanted to get to the bottom of this on my own, and I think I know who the murderer is. You do? Yes, but I don't want to cast suspicion on him until I'm sure. Mr. Sinclair, whom do you suspect and why? I can't tell you. I can wait. You asked me about him this morning. It's Bill Hemingway. Early next morning, the detectives went to Hemingway's home in Baldwin. And no luck. Not a sign of life. Well, let's try next door.
explain everything, Sergeant. Just, just give me a chance to think. Uh, oh, I'm in trouble. Money, debts. Here's Hemingway. Go on. Did Douglas Hadrian tell you that I've been juggling the accounts? Yes. Yeah, well, that's not true. Someone lied to him. Someone tampered with my figures. Why did you leave here so abruptly yesterday? Look, I had to get back to the agency. You didn't stay there very long either. Look, the Apex Credit Company are going to repossess my car. I wanted to hide it. Mm -hmm. Why did you tell your cleaning lady exactly where you were going? Look, I wanted her to say that I was with Mr. Hadrian. Why? Well, I told the Apex Credit crowd that I was going to borrow the money from Hadrian yesterday. Did you borrow the money? No. Well, did you try? No. Look, I was going to show this to Hadrian yesterday morning at the office. It's a final notice. Hmm. Well, why didn't you? Well, he was sick when I got in. What time was that? Eight o'clock. Why did you go in so early? Well, I'd been working at home on a costing for Hadrian to take with him to his nine o'clock meeting. Did you come in through the parking area? Yes. Did you speak to anyone? Kevin Sinclair. Well, did you speak to him? Oh, no, he was in a hurry. Well, he'll tell you he saw me, though. He hasn't told us. Well, well, he will if you ask him. Why were you in such a hurry when we came to see you this morning? Oh, I'd heard the news about Adrian on the radio. Mm-hmm. Well? Well, look, I wanted a chance to prove I hadn't misappropriated any funds. It's a strange way to go about it, Mr. Hemingway. Look, if I can go back over all my figures on the consolidated account, I can prove I'm not dishonest. Where were you yesterday afternoon? On the pier in Port Melbourne. And what were you doing there? Oh, I was keeping out of the way of the Apex Credit Company. Did anybody see you? A couple of blokes. They were fishing. Any idea who they were? Well, one of them was the caretaker at the Sandringham Yacht Club. His friend called him Hal. Oh, well, we'll check on that. Where did you go after that? Home. I locked my car in the garage and hid in my own home. Can you prove that? Anybody uh, phone you, for instance? Oh, the telephone rang every quarter of an hour or so. <laughs> I didn't answer it, though. All right, you can go, Mr Hemingway. But we'll be in touch with you. You could use some rest. Oh, by the way, when your phone rings, answer it, would you please? Check with the Sandringham Yacht Club. Ask for the caretaker. I think Hemingway's fishing story will stand up. Oh, I've got the same hunch. You got to see Sinclair now. Yes, Sinclair the private eye. Didn't do too well at naming his first suspect, did he? In the Supreme Court, Kevin Sinclair was tried for the murder of Douglas Hadrian. Detective Fraser gave vital evidence for the Crown. And then on the afternoon of January the 16th, I again accompanied Sergeant Bronson to Olinda. That was the day after the murder? Yes, sir. And what did you do at Olinda? We searched the paddock behind the deceased's property. We found tire tracks indicating that a car had been parked at a point where it would not have been visible from either Hadrian's house or the road. Did you do anything in regard to those tire tracks? We made pasta moles. We also took samples of soil and foliage from ferny plants that had been crushed by the weight of the car. And when did you see the accused again? Well, later that afternoon we went to his home and in his presence examined a sports car. I then said to the accused, a vehicle with tyres similar to these on your car was recently parked in a clearing behind Hadrian's house at Alinda. The accused replied, that's a good lead for you. It must have been Bill Hemingway's car. Well, what did you do then? I took scrapings of soil from between the treads on the tyres of the accused's car, and I pointed out to the accused that these scrapings contained fragments of fern leaves. Thank you. No more questions. Did you examine Hemingway's car? Yes, sir. And did you look for any signs of its having been at Alinda? Yes, sir. Did you find any? No, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Was it a perfunctory inspection? No, sir. It was a thorough one. Well, do you agree if Hemingway had been on Hadrian's property, it would have made the case much more complicated? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Now, you say that on January the 16th, you found some tire tracks. Now, when you looked at these tracks, were you able to say exactly how long they'd been made? No, sir. You weren't? Well, perhaps my client will be able to enlighten you when he gives evidence. Ah, yes, the tire tracks. 
They were not made on the day of Mr. Hadrian's death. I didn't go to Olinda until the following morning, the 16th. I parked my car in the paddock shortly after 6 a.m. And what was your purpose in going there that day? Well, to be quite frank, I had no faith in the CIB. They'd failed to protect Mr. Hadrian, and I wasn't impressed with their efforts to track down his murderer. So I decided to do an on-the-spot investigation myself. Yes, and what did you do after you'd parked the car? Uh, first, let me say that I suspected Bill Hemingway. I knew that he was heavily in debt, and I thought he might return to uh, the scene of the crime and help himself to some of Mr. Hadrian's valuable ornaments and so forth. It was for this reason that I hid the car. I didn't want Hemingway forewarned that I was on the premises. Yes, and what did you do after you hid the car? I went over to the house and searched around for clues. I was after proof that Hemingway had been there, but apparently the CIB hadn't overlooked anything. I found nothing of interest. For how long were you searching? I would say an hour. Then I returned to the paddock and watched the house from a concealed position. And how long did you remain there? Until nine o'clock. But as Hemingway didn't appear, I lost patience. I got in my car and returned to the city. I'm afraid it's the story of an abortive investigation. But it does explain the tire tracks that Mr. Fraser found the day after the murder. What were your feelings towards Douglas Hadrian? 100% admiration. You didn't resent the way he treated you? He paid me a very high salary. Lent me a large sum of money, interest free. Enabling me to buy a beautiful home in a beautiful area. That's how he treated me, how could I resent it? But in your day-to-day -day dealings with him, didn't you find him difficult? No. I was completely at ease with him. Outside of being business-wise, he was the model of patience and consideration. But that's not what you told Sergeant Bronson, is it? That's exactly what I told him. I'm afraid I repeated myself word for word. I'm referring to the second interview. So am I. Bronson's version of it was inaccurate. Did you have anything to gain from Hadrian's death? No, nothing. Didn't Mr. Hadrian tell you that in the event of his death, you would become managing director? He had said it, but he hadn't put it in writing. There is a difference, isn't there? I'll ask the question, Sinclair. All right, then I'll give the answers. The position was that I knew his wife would inherit the business. That was in writing. Do you want to say anything more in regard to that? Yes. I knew that he told Mrs. Harry that should anything happen to him, I would be the best one to manage the agency for her. But I couldn't count on her going along with that. Yes, and wasn't Just a this tip? I want to be sure that you got the point. As long as Hadrian was alive, I had security. I couldn't be sure what would happen after his death. And wasn't this typical of the way he treated you? If I were allowed to put a question, I'd ask you what you meant. Now, Hadrian had a bad heart, and he was likely to die at any moment. He had told you that you would be in charge after his death, but he had done nothing to ensure that you should. It was just a case of him getting round to it. Well, don't you think that you would feel that he was deliberately tormenting you? No, and I resent you maligning a man who can no longer defend himself. You say you didn't kill him? Yes. You were not in Olinda that day? No. You went there the next morning at six o'clock? Yes. That is the morning of the 16th of January. Yes, yes, yes. Must we have this repetition? And you searched the grounds of Hadrian's property? A portion of it. The vicinity of the house and the garage? Of course. Did you see anybody? No. You sure of that? Yes. You didn't see a police constable on duty near the garage? I ask you, you didn't see a police constable near the garage where the murder had taken place? Was there one on duty all the time? Well, now, if you had been there on the morning of the 16th, you'd be able to tell me, wouldn't you? Were you bluffing? No, Sinclair. I can call evidence. I see. You weren't there that morning, were you? No, I wasn't. No. So you haven't explained away the tire tracks, have you? No. No. You were there the day before, the day Hadrian was killed, weren't you? Yes, yes. and you arrived before Hadrian. I repeat, you arrived before Hadrian, didn't you? Yes, all right, I arrived before him. I hid myself in the garage and waited until he came. Then I walked up to the car and he died. And you fired a bullet into his neck. That's beside the point. He was dead before I shot him, so it wasn't murder. But when you approached him with that gun in your hand, you had the intention of killing him, didn't you? Yes, but I was forestalled by nature. Sinclair. I refer you to the pathologist's evidence. Hadrian died from heart failure. Why did you want to kill him? As I didn't kill him, I can't see that that's relevant. But as everything seems to be out in the open, I don't mind telling you that I hated him. Why? He was a complete sadist. He'd raised me to a position of authority, but 
constantly humiliated me in front of my subordinates. It was intolerable. Yes, well, why didn't you just leave the agency? How could I leave? I was heavily in debt. And because of this, I knew he would prevent me getting a job anywhere else in the business. Sinclair, you don't deny the fact that Hadrian died of a heart attack when he saw you pointing that gun at him. That is correct, isn't it? Yes, and I can see that you're going to argue that it was murder because of my intention. But you can't prove that he wouldn't have died of a heart attack at that precise moment, even if I hadn't appeared. You can't prove that, can you? You'll never prove that. But then Sinclair said, you can't prove that Hadrian wouldn't have had his heart attack anyway, even if I hadn't appeared. Good point. Yeah, but the prosecutor had cut the ground from under him. Oh. Well, he put this to him. You don't question the fact that Hadrian died of a heart attack when he saw you with the revolver. Well, Sinclair went along with that. So the jury took the attitude that he caused the heart attack. And because he was there with the intention of killing Hadrian, that was it. Guilty of murder. But Sinclair sh should have said that uh, Hadrian collapsed without seeing him. Yeah. Do you think he might have got away with that, Sarge? No. No, this was a very intelligent jury. Interstate artists choose to stay at California Motel, Melbourne. They fly the friendly way with TAA, the nation's jetline. 